Hey guys, this is AC Silver's Tech, and today what we're looking at is electronic water column manometers. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just discussing where I started off in the trade. I started off with this type of water column manometer, and then I moved up to a digital one. Uh, then I actually have a, a two-port one of these as well from UEI, and now I am at the uh, Fieldpiece SDMN6. So the reason I'm at this right now is you can test pressure switches with it, which is I'm going to show you in a, in a minute here. You can test all kinds of pressure switches. If you have a problem with an error code in your furnace, and it's saying it's the pressure switch, and you're testing the water column coming from the tube coming off of the pressure switch, and everything seems to line up with this pressure, you can actually isolate the pressure switch Make sure you're holding it vertically like this, and you can actually test it away from the furnace just with this tester right here because it has a built-in pump. As well, uh, we need sensitive water calm manometers just to, in order to check for variable speed and three-speed gas valves in furnaces. It's a lot different than when I started out. We were using these, and that would be fine because you know all we had was uh, single-speed furnaces, and we had some two-speed furnaces that were out there. And then, then we had three-speed furnaces, and now we have variable-speed furnaces. So the three-speed furnaces, the uh, first speed is extremely low. It's less than half a water column, uh, typically. And you're going to see whatever the, the manufacturer's rating plate says as far as uh, uh, first speed for the water column reading. But the variable-speed readings, I mean, we're down at like 0.2 water column. That's, that's crazy, okay? So for a gas valve, we could check the inlet pressure right here with this screw right here that we could undo with a service wrench. We would turn the gas off, turn the furnace off, take that out, and then we would put our brass fitting in, and then we would hook up our manometer in order to check the, the pressure. Okay. Then after that, we'd turn the gas valve back on, we'd turn the furnace on, and have it run. Then we'd be checking our inlet gas pressure. We could also check it at the drip T, like right here. We could have a cap with a brass barb fitting already tapped into it and uh, check the gas pressure there while the furnace is running. And over here, once again, we would turn the gas furnace off. We would take this off and we would attach our brass barb fitting over on this side. And this will give us our outlet gas pressure. And that could be adjusted right here with underneath this brass screw. And we would check our gas pressure. Well, if you see two brass screws, that means it's a two-speed gas valve. And if you saw two brass screws here and then a possible another uh, brass screw over next to this or on this gas valve, then that would mean it's a three-stage gas valve. So that basically takes this out of play. You, you can't really use that. Uh, this could be used for single-stage gas valves or you know just checking the pressure, um, the inlet pressure uh, at a house. That could be used for that. But basically, we're just using the digital manometers because we can get a very accurate uh, reading with them. So we could use it for gas pressure, we could use it for pressure switches, we can use it for checking static pressure across the evaporator coil to make sure that the evaporator coil is not clogged with dust. So there's a lot of uses uh, for these manometers and you know the static pressure is very very small as well. You know you might have, you might be looking at 0.1 or uh, 0.085, you might be reading 0.15, you know. Um, the total external static pressure on a gas furnace, typically you want to make sure that uh, from the return to the supply you don't have any more than 0.5, but uh, every installation uh, will be a little different. The manufacturer's ratings uh, will be different and the filter rack that you're using will be different, but the furnace will tell you uh, what the maximum external static pressure needs to be. So we need an accurate water columnometer. So what we have is we have these two wires right here that are going to go onto the pressure switch. In this case, this pressure switch that we're using is 0.18. So that's 0.18 water column. So that's what we're looking for. Over here, what we have is a junction right here from two tubes to one tube. So you see that this says pump right here and this says P1. So we're gonna use the pump to pump negative pressure and then we're gonna read it at our P1. So both of those tubes get connected and then we're gonna go ahead and read it. So we're first gonna turn this on. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you zero it out. So you're gonna hold the zero button down for about one second. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna press the test button. 
and, and that's going to end up starting up the pump. It's important to know to not connect this tube to the pressure switch uh, while the startup is happening because this could be running say negative four inch water column or something like that, negative five inch water column on this pressure switch that has a rating of only 0.18. So that could damage the pressure switch. We don't want to do that. All right, now the pump is ready and we want to press the hold button because we want to see what pressure it's going to end up closing the electrical circuit at. This is a normally open electrical switch that will end up closing once it receives the negative pressure of 0.18 if this pressure switch is good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have the hold button flashing. We're going to turn the pressure switch vertically like the way it would be in a furnace and we're going to attach this in. We're going to see, okay, right there it said that it closed at 0.14. Now we're going to see if once we turn it down to see what it's going to unclick at, meaning it's going to open the electrical circuit. To do that, you have to press the hold button and we're going to go down, decrease. Just so you know, we'll press the hold button again. While it's flashing, it's waiting for the switch to open up. See, it's always waiting for the switch anytime that you have the hold button flashing like that. So we're pressing the down arrow and we're decreasing the pump uh, pressure right there. Okay, so right there it's at 0.15 and that's when the pressure switch opens. So you see that little button right there where it says closed it is now not lit. So once again, We'll press the hold to unhold it. Press the hold again. Now it's flashing. We'll go back up and see what pressure it's going to close the electrical switch at. Okay, that time it was 0.18. So the first time it closes, it was at 0.14. When it opened, it was at 0.15. And now when it closes, at 0.18. So that's about the tolerance of this. That's a, a very small uh, negative pressure reading on this. It will always be a little bit more accurate when it's a little higher, say 0.3 or 0.5 inch water column on the pressure switch. But 0.18, and we're reading that right here, 0.18, I'd say this pressure switch is good. Now, the other thing is this water commonometer could be used to set adjustable pressure switches. So that's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so I really do like this and it takes the guesswork um, it's not guesswork because it's you know a matter of testing but what it does is it actually helps you to confirm that you definitely have a bad pressure switch or you definitely have a good pressure switch it just takes one thing out of play okay so um, especially if it's an intermittent problem that's when I, I really like to use this when you have an intermittent issue um, it can it can tell you that the pressure switch is not the problem typically intermittent issues with furnaces that have pressure switches is something to do with the water, the condensate uh, from the furnace, uh, something like that. Or it could be maybe the vent pipe is not pitched correctly and there's, a, there's water filling up in the exhaust pipe. Something along that line is typically an intermittent problem with a pressure switch. But uh, a good accurate uh, pressure tester uh, will, will really help you with that. And this also does dual port as well. So you can, you can take a uh, pressure differential uh, across the, the furnace or the quill like we were saying earlier. And if you wanted to support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech where we're providing extra content there for the supporters such as videos and posts and answering uh, different questions there. And if you're looking for the tools using this video, they're all listed down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.